who's that Lilum? A very good friend. Lilum receiving mysterious messages by Lana Smithy. Halloween was back in October, but this terrifying tale didn't become popular until now. Reports say that Lilim across the city have been receiving strange transmissions with messages that are confusing at best and threatening at worst. The contents are not clear, as most of the Lilim can't remember exactly what they had heard. But the most mysterious thing of all is perhaps the fact that the Lilim could not record any of these messages while they were broadcasted. It was almost as if something had blocked the Lilim from doing so. While we have nothing but anecdotal proof, even among our own Lilum, the mystery behind these messages is one we should be paying attention to. Spooky. Or a bluff. Is Kira Miki the biggest pop idol in history? By Lana Smithy. The world at large is still coming to terms with the idea of the Lilum being so quickly integrated into our society. Some say they can't be treated as human because they're immortal and as such cannot really understand what it's like to be alive but most of the Kiramiki fandom would disagree. anti Lilum people are insane. To me, Miki knows more about life than I do, and I'm older than this damn city. Richard Cho, 55, told the Augmented Eye during a fan gathering. I'm with Richard, added Nacho, 6. I may be a dog, but I'm utterly fascinated with the way she writes about things in her blog. She's impressed by everything. And nobody really knows what life's about anyway. Nacho? Dog? Don't tell me. Quincy studies the possibility of allowing imports. By Lana Smithy. Glitch City is one of the few places on Earth that's strictly self-sufficient, with an import rate of only 0.8%. However, that might change due to the recent shortages across the city. Prime Minister Quincy revealed this morning that the government plans to have a more relaxed policy for importers. We won't lift the currency control, but we can provide them foreign currency at a low fixed rate. That way, we can secure essential items at affordable prices, Quincy told AE. Some experts say that private companies are no longer working at full capacity, which is unsurprising news given that the Quincy government has seized most of them resulting in the shortage crisis in the first place. So he decided to not steal all of the city's funds? Good. Good evening. Ah, hey. How are you feeling? Lilum are soft and warm. Come again? You heard me. So on a scale from steaming pile of shit to just sad, where are you? Hmm. A sad pile of shit. I still hate myself. I'm still sad as hell, but... How to put it? Uh, the noise stopped. I don't know if I explained myself. Sorta. Of, kinda. So, how were things last night? Cozy, I must admit. I can't believe you paid Dorothy for that. Well, if you want to call that payment, I guess. Hmm? I called Dorothy to tell her what happened to you, and she was really concerned. She stuttered for a second, saying that she had the whole night to go, and she couldn't just leave for free. I asked her how much, and she said, Enough to pay for this soda I'm having is fine. How'd you get her number? I have... contacts. Right. Anyways, Jill, if you need a second break, a drink, or a hug, just let me know, you hear? Thanks. I'd make you the same offer, but I'm guessing hugs from me are the last thing you want. If you need a bartender, let me know, though. Nice to know. Anyways, we have work to do. Time to mix drinks and change lives. <laughs> it's nice to hear that again. Did you say something? Did I? Welcome to Valhalla- Oh, it's you guys. Hey, be more respectful. I brought my boss here. Aren't you a part-timer here or something? My other boss. 
You're talking to the great Nacho Tumbleweed Jr. Boss, I'm taking my break. I know what I said earlier, but you haven't even started yet. Shit. So, what brings you here today? I wanted to see the place my best soldier is working at. Soldier? Wait, aren't you the dog I served last Monday? Huh? Oh, it's you, Dana. Soldier, why didn't you tell me you were working for Dana? No, that's not Dana, that's just Jay. So I'm guessing you're part of this whole Kira thing. Part of it? I founded it. Humans have the best intentions, but they just don't get us. So I decided to create a place where dogs can be dogs. Here, we can take in any dog without a place in this world. We created our own heaven on earth. And do you take corgis only? Do I look like one of those safe far bitches? Of course not. I'd include other animals, but sadly I can only take care of those who are of the same species as I. Sad thing is, I'd take them more seriously, but it's a talking corgi with an eye patch. Will you get anything? I'm fine. What about you, boss? Manly stuff! You sure? Did I stutter? Alright. A manly drink for the dog. Maybe I should just give him something bitter. Here. Yes, this is just what I wanted. <clears throat> Meh, this tastes worse than my own butt. Hey, you asked for it. This is a really nice place, you know? You picked a good place to work at, soldier. Thanks. Does he really get paid? Your efforts to keep Kira afloat will not go to waste. We'll make her better and better. I mean, we're pretty much on the verge of closing. Can boss really afford that? We have more urgent matters at hand, though. Like the fact we don't have enough balls for everyone. Can't they just share the ones we have? You fool! Every dog has a right to have his own ball! If we can't provide even that, then what's the point of even trying? Wait, don't tell me she just doesn't give a fuck and is spending all of her money like water. I mean, what with the bar closing and all that? But many have enjoyed the boxes more than they do the balls. That's a good point. What do you think is cheaper, a box of balls or a box of boxes? Are there boxes of boxes? Of course there are. How do you think they ship boxes? Tied together? Tied together? Don't be silly. Unless she's paying him straight from her pocket. Boss is that kind of woman. This world is filled with all sorts of recursive madness, you know? Doctors consult doctors, boxes come in boxes, bottles come in bottles. Oh, as expected from you, boss. Wait, that theory only works assuming she's actually paying him with money. For all I know, she might be paying him with stakes. So tomorrow you're gonna check for people selling boxes, you hear? Sir, yes sir. Except that to boss, a good stake is more valuable than money. Wait, what if they come with foil? Rosenstrauss had to be taken to the vet because he ate the foil a piece of cheese came in. Curses! You're right. We need a contingency plan. Besides, boss is not one to scam people, let alone a dog. I wonder if we can strike a deal with the vet those Seafar bastards have. She's always so nice with us. I know, her smile is so cute too. So it's better that we vet for a vet? Yes, put that on the list. Ah, Nacho. Oh yeah, I forgot she knew the dog. Are you staying for a while? I was just passing by, I've got some errands to run. Great, Gil can go with you. I can? You will. I'll still get paid for today, right? 
That depends on Nacho's evaluation. All right, Greenhorn, let's get going. <sighs> no, I'm paying him anyways, by the way. Just wanted to mess around with him. No, that's not the problem here. Why make him do that? Gil looked like he needed to take a good break, and he's the kind to just not accept such a thing. But with Nacho, he'd have something to do, and he'd be away from the bar for a bit. When you put it that way. Anyway, I'm going back to my office. Your boss sure is nice. Glad I'm working with her, too. Yeah. So, you having anything? Actually, I'm just gonna go sit over there and be on standby. Await orders. Okay. Shit. I missed the chance to ask Hab or if he even gets paid with money. Man, I sure need to get wasted. I fail to see how getting wasted will make you feel bet. Shiba! For fuck's sake, you piece of scrap. We just got out of a building full of dogs. But this one has a Hawaiian shirt and sunglasses. <sighs> Welcome to Valhalla. Hey, Joe. Give me a beer, will ya? Gotcha. Does Deal want anything? Okay, roll. So cute. He's fine. Just a beer, then? Friday after work isn't just a beer, though. It's THE beer. Can't argue with that. Beer for Betty. I can make it big for the heck of it. Here, let's make it special. Yeah. Cheers. Hey, Jill, do you like beer? The amount of beer cans in my apartment is becoming a problem, actually. I had this friend back in high school who made some pretty nice crafts with them. I'm still in contact with him if you're interested. No, thanks. The last thing I need right now is more crap taking space. So, how are things up at Dogtown? Well, that Laura girl is stirring things up, for better or for worse. For worse? She's... Mm, like a rabbit. An overly politically correct rabbit. R rabbit Never had a pet rabbit? They're a nervous mess that gets startled over the littlest of things. And this girl is on the constant lookout, scared of saying something that might irk someone. It doesn't have to be the person she's speaking with, even. It's no problem in the company, but the other day we went out together and holy shit! Poor girl can't speak properly. She pauses every sentence to make sure she doesn't say something offensive. She's a nice girl, and it's sweet that she tries so hard not to offend anyone. But seriously, she tries too hard. You don't help either. Hmm? You randomly yell, WHAT DID YOU SAY?! whenever she's within earshot distance. Yeah, well, it's just that she looks so cute when she's startled, like a rabbit. It raises up the question of whether she's really like that, or if you're the one making her wary of anything she says. Well, why don't we test that? How? You go out with her. Why? To test if it's really me who makes her like that. Hmm. It's not like you can say no, you know? I mean, it's my honor that's on the line here. I want to prove you're only talking shit about me. Even if you were right, you have quite the fixation on that girl. She's fun. Fun how? She actually reacts when I tease her. Mm hmm. You take it in your stride, but she actually gets startled, squirms, and then gets uncomfortable. How is that any good? She's cute, and her reactions are cute. But if you keep it up, she'll either leave or get used to you. You know, like me. Shit, you're right. I must save my teasing for when the moment is just right, then. No, that's not the problem. It is for me. What are you doing here? What about the dog? 
He said he had to go out. By the way, he said his name was... Say, this Laura girl, do you guys get along? I wouldn't know. We get along as co-workers at the very least. Hmm. What kind of girl is she? Aside from the whole politically correct rabbit thing. Slow. She's the kind that does things so carefully that she does them really, really slowly. Really, really slowly. I can't deny that when she actually finishes stuff, she does a great job, but... It's unnerving. She doesn't actually have to be with us in the building, though. She's more like a freelancer. Why is she there, then? Because she likes dogs. And that's why I insist that you two would make a fine couple. That's a really superficial statement. It's like saying you'd be fine with someone because you're both women. Hmm. Okay, bad example. May I say something? By all means. If that Laura girl is really as bland as you claim her to be, wouldn't she be better off with a more, um, a more assertive person? Lilum? Uh, a more assertive partner? You know, piece of scrap. She's totally calling you a pussy. Ugh. She's right, though. Sharing interests and being compatible are totally different things. But then, you'd be underestimating the power of love! Whether you want to admit it or not, love changes people, for better or for worse. Who knows? Maybe we'll come more assertive after spending time with her. Or she'll drive me nuts. I guess that's a possibility, too. Still, why are you so insistent on me and her getting together? Cause she's like a cute rabbit. So someone might try to eat her out there. It'd be a lot easier to keep her in my sight. So in short, your motherly instincts arose because of Laura. <sighs> why not see if she likes you and... You already tried to hit on her, didn't you? You make me sound like some skirt chaser. She's not into girls. How did you find out? I asked her directly. Of course you did. She seemed... Mm, giddy afterwards, though. I heard her muttering something about meeting her first lesbian. It was weird. Okay, enough Laura for a night. That... Refrain from using that's what you said last night jokes or variations thereof, please. Party pooper. Let's get a drink then. Sounds good. I'll have a bloom light, please. Get me a fringe weaver. Alright. Let's make one bloom light and one fringe weaver. Here you go. I wonder why it's called a bloom light. It seems it was first developed at some video games event. The creator said something about making the attendees feel like their customers do. Said attendees were, of course, part of some big games company. Seems that company always used too much bloom lighting, so the bartender there literally made them drink all the bloom. So it's not called that because it glows in the dark? Not this one, no. Come to think of it, did you ever change because of a relationship, Jill? Uh, in more ways than one, I guess. Would you say for better, or for worse? I guess for the better. I'm too thick-headed to develop any new bad habits. Although, thanks to my first boyfriend, I did pick up a very annoying habit of correcting people's grammar on the fly. Pretty annoying when I think back to it. So you were one of those kinds of people. As for me, sometimes I think I became more... Ugh, what's the word? Cynical? Jaded? Bitter? Tired of the crap of this world and everyone in it throws on a daily basis? Hey. I'm just quoting you. <sighs> but yeah, I think I became all of that because of this one girlfriend I had in college. She got me into the whole activism thing in the first place. 
How is that bad? We'd all go and protest. We'd start all kinds of movements to see things change. I really got into the whole thing. But whenever I wanted to get more serious, I'd find myself coming up against a wall. That wall is an analogy for the fact that not everyone was willing to go that far. I found out pretty fast that most of them were in the whole thing because of some shitty fad. Not because they actually believed in whatever movement they were championing. So I moved from group to group, only to find people who were in it because of a fad. And when they were not in it because of a passing fad, they were the dangerous extremist kind. My tolerance for people's shit was greatly diminished after all of that. So it wasn't so much the person you had a relationship with, but rather the other people. Um... You seriously never thought about it that way? Uh... You need to stop putting the blame for what you do on past relationships. Whatever. Where's the other guy, by the way? He had to escort one of the dogs outside. Figures. Oh, yeah. The one that was here asked if you were the nice vet lady that works at the Safar Toy Company. I suppose he's interested in talking to you or something. Why didn't he do it then? I don't know. You've been doing a few jobs on the side, haven't you? The pay for the dogs is enough to keep up with the mountain debts. I don't know how you do it. It's hard to believe dogs pay you at all. But this is coming from someone working at a place that pays a dog for doing fuck all. Or at least I think we're paying him. I'm not completely certain we do. Will you get anything else? Well... We're fine, but we have to get up early tomorrow. And by we, I really mean her. She got invited to a picnic, and I won't stand to hear another had-to-go-to-a-picnic-with-a-hangover story. Fine. Let's go, then. See you, Jill. Bye. Please come again. Man, you're such a party pooper. You'll be the party pooper tomorrow if you keep drinking. Boss, I'll take my break. Call me if someone comes. Alright.